Hey everyone, I got an exciting show for you today. One of the most frequently kind of talked about things on this channel is mortgages, lending. Uh, I put out a video the other day about one of the, uh, one of the lenders kind of changing things up, which they have every right to do. And uh, to do that, uh, I reached out to someone in the social media landscape who's been an entrepreneur uh, pretty much since he was born, uh, very big in social media and big into mortgages today. So let's welcome Ryan Ayler to the show. How you doing, Ryan? Hey, I'm doing good, Michael. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Why don't you give uh, the audience kind of 30 seconds on who Ryan is? Yeah, me, I'm like a serial entrepreneur. Um, it's the only way I know I've been, you know, having to, to kill to eat for as long as I can remember. And it's just kind of ingrained in me. And a few years ago, I got into mortgages and it was just like a match made. Um, so I grow my business 100% using social media predominantly with video mm -hmm. and it's just exploded what we do, you know, here in my local area in um, Arizona, Mesa, Gilbert, Chandler area. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I like to have fun and do a bunch of goofy, crazy stuff on social media and it works. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll get into the social media aspects here in a minute. Cause I'm sure there's tons of things I can learn from you, but why don't we talk about kind of why mortgages was it, um, uh, just sort of match made in heaven because you kind of had a network already with investors or buyers or how did it, how did it start? What brought you to what, what was attractive? So what happened is I owned a personal training gym and one of our longtime clients was a, a, in mortgage and he goes, man, if you guys applied the marketing you do here in mortgages, your life would be changed forever. And it took him about a year to convince us. And I finally said, Hey, I'll give this a shot. And um, the road was not easy in the beginning. <laughs> It was not easy, but once we just persevered and kept pushing and kept doing, you know, being consistent, um, our business has just exploded. We've, we've pretty much doubled or more than doubled every year. Very, very cool. So just so we get on the same page, when you say mortgages, what, what does your client base look like? Is it, is it the kind of owner occupant FHA? Is it the cash out refis? Is it investors? I mean, there's, when we say mortgages, that's a, that's a big word. Right. And the truth is, it's a lot of everything. So we have a lot of first-time buyers. We have a lot of people that are selling a home and upgrading a home, FHA, conventional. I do a lot of VAs. I have um, you know, a few investment clients that I have that are buying investment properties. Some people are getting into flip and holds and some, or buy and hold. Some people are getting to buy and flips. So it just mm -hmm. depends on the given scenario for each person's portfolio. Very cool. So this channel that you're on is really about real estate investors. So we'll kind of angle the conversation that direction. One thing I would like to know is, have you seen any, I don't know if I want to call them rule changes. Rule changes is the wrong word, but maybe programs for investors that have evolved over time. Maybe they were doing one thing two years ago, but they're doing something different today. Can you sort of give our investors a, a, a feel for what you're seeing? Yes, because um, what we do is uh, there's a lot of non-QM. So I'm a broker, which gives me a lot of leverage. So I can go out and find different lenders that are willing to do different type of programs. And one of the, the most prominent one that stands out for someone that wants to buy like a um, something they want to rent out would be 20% down, no income. So mm -hmm. as long as you have decent credit um, and you have 20% down, you can get a loan on a house and they just value it based off of the tenant that's already in place or based off the rent schedules with the appraisal. So you don't even have to show your W-2s, your income, nothing. Just one bank statement to show that you have funds like to close. That's it. Yeah. Close, maybe a little for reserves, things of that nature, probably. So 20% right. down, no income. Very cool. That, I don't think that existed two or three years ago. No, I mean, that's the closest yeah. thing to a stated is you can go and it has to be an investment. They're not going to let people do that for primary. Ah, see, I love this because I've been doing this for almost 20 years now. And that, that subtle tweak you just did there is one of the reasons why uh, we're not going to have the kind of real estate bubble really was a mortgage bu bubble that we had in 07 uh, because they're right. getting smarter, right? They're changing those little variables, right? And an investment loan is not the same as a personal or primary residence. Uh, so that subtle tweak exactly. is awesome. And requiring that 20% down. Very cool. Uh, I'm guessing... Uh, Right now for 20 percent down, you know, kind of um, no income or stated income, whatever you want to call it. It's probably something in and around 6% fixed for 30 years. That's right. You can do arms or you can do fixed and it's going to be anywhere between six and 8% depending on how many points you want to pay in and what your credit rating is and the, 
um, you know, the loan to value based off of that house. So definitely some variables in there, but you're yeah. right. Six to 8% is yeah. where you're going to. Yeah. So again, right. If you do seven, if you do a 70% LTV, you'll get a little better rate. This is the standard stuff folks. And, and, and this is stuff you have to pay attention to, right? A, a full right. 20% down 80% LTV is going to be more expensive. You put the extra 10% down, it's less risk on the lender. So they're lower the points, better credit, better rate, you know, all the standard stuff. But, um, I, actually, I haven't, even, I haven't even looked at an arm in a while. What's an like a five-year arm today? Is it low fives, high fours? You know, I have not had anybody do one in the last two years. So Smart. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even look at them right now to be honest, because everybody wants that guaranteed, you know, fixed thirty, just because of the economic landscape and how the rates are. I mean, think where rates were yeah. eighteen months ago compared yeah. to where they're at now. Yeah, and if they move that much what's going to happen in the next 18 months. And in reality, there's not much room for them to go down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If anybody's watching this channel and you're getting an arm, uh, stop watching the channel because <laughs> you need to be getting <laughs> fixed, you know, either fix 15 or 30 years at the point, assuming you want to make it a rental, right? If you're doing a, a buy, fix and flip, you know, that's a different conversation, right? Do whatever makes sense for your business model, but long-term holds exactly. one rental at a time, which is this channel. 30 year money all day long. Um, just cause you brought it up. Let's share with everybody 18 months ago, interest rates would have been what on a program like this in the mid sevens, maybe at least. Yeah. At least. I mean, all rates were about a point and a half higher. Yep. Yeah. Before three red, three fed rate cuts. Yeah. It was, that's why the economy was kind of slowing and puttering along because um, maybe they, maybe they had one or two raises too many too soon. So makes that was the worst year for, a lot of people in mortgage that they've had in a long time. Yeah. And then the other thing because you it said, so oh, it was just so abrupt of a change that the, the consumers just didn't know what to do. So they just didn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah, a lot of your, a lot of people that are buying homes are owner occupants, but if you take the rate up, you know, three quarters or a single point, people are buying on mortgage payments. They're not buying based on sticker price or list price. It's all about the mortgage payment. That's how most people think. So. Right. And they think, you know, everything's in terms of a deal. Like whenever I buy my homes, I think of in terms of an investment. So yeah. I don't really look at the rate. I just look at, can I swing that payment? And then what's this going to yield for me in five or 10 years? And that's exactly. how I make my decisions. No, exactly. And the other thing you said, I just want to put it out there is you, you talked about homes, which I translate as residential. So we're talking four units and below. Yeah. Correct. Oh, awesome. And there, there are programs where you can go more. I have Personally, I haven't ventured into those, but those are options that I either can find a lender to do mm -hmm. or we'll just find somebody else within the, like I have a big broker network of 4,000 brokers. So if it's something that's just outside of my scope um, that I don't feel like I'm going to be the expert on, I just mm -hmm. hand that off to somebody that I trust. So yeah. that's the way that I like to do it. Yeah. And it's the right way to do it, right? Create focus. Don't create distractions. Stay in your lane, if you will. Uh, so let's ask right. some general questions that I get on this channel all the time. Um, so first and foremost, uh, if it's the 20% down, no income program, that's fine. So let's stay in the rental landlord area. What if, um, what's the minimum, right? Is the minimum a hundred K loan, 75 K loan, 50 K, right? Cause you got a lot of people that watch this across the country. They're going, Hey, I got a 25 K house, but I want to get a loan. The lowest I've seen it go is right around that 80, hundred K mark. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm sure there are people that will do it lower. It just depends on the, like you said, the landscape and what lenders are in that area. Yeah. And, and that's okay. I mean, I knew the answer. I just want to put it out there. Right. And the, right. And, you know, this is folks watching this, you just have to realize that a lot of this is the cost to the lender, right? They, they now have fees and more importantly, max fees that they can charge for a loan because of Dodd-Frank and what, you know, rules put into place. That's why you don't see a lot of 50 K 30 year fixed loans because they have caps and it's too expensive for them to do the loan. Cause it's really right. the same process for a 200 K loan. It is a 50 K loan, but given there's max fees, it's not profitable. That's, you know, that's right. my opinion from the outside. So let's dive into this a little bit because a lot of people, I actually, it took me over a year to get a refinance done for an investor because of their financial profile. 
So here's my word of advice to anybody that's going to do like hard money or something non-traditional and wants to refi after all the renovations have been done. So this is more for a buy and hold. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're buying a fourplex. I'll just use this scenario. Buy a sure. fourplex. Yep. We fix up each unit as we go. Yep. And then live in one of the units so it's a primary. Yep. Right? So when we refinance, the refinance rate is going to be spectacular and he's going to live there for the foreseeable future. Yep. So in the beginning, nothing has been done, but um, they did get lease agreements in place. So we're like, okay, we're going to use that income. Problem is, is he quit his job because now he's an investor, which <laughs> messed up all of the finances and he had other businesses, but the taxes were not lining up to what it needed to be for the debt to income to, to work out for a traditional. So it took a year for him to work with his accountant and build his his business where it needed to be to make the income that was required mm -hmm. to qualify. Oh, wow. So my word of advice, if you're going to do something like this, you probably want to get with your end lender, like who's going to actually do the end loan before you do the hard money and at least know that you're in the ballpark. So you're not stuck with a 12 to 18% interest for two or three years. Yeah. And at some point that note will come due and you know, they can take that property if you can't pay in full. There you go. I'm glad you brought that up because there's so much talk and really sex appeal around the Burr strategy, right? Buy, repair, rent, refi, repeat. Um, and you're so right. I talk about it all the time. You better talk to your end lender first because getting into a Burr project is ridiculously easy. And, but if right. you can't get out, you've, got, you've just bought a problem. Um, so uh, I'm glad we talked about that. Uh, any other kind of words of advice you want to talk about people that want to do bird projects? How, you know, maybe somebody watching this cause you, you can do national loans. Uh, you know, let's just do it now. We'll do it again at the end. How can people reach out to you? Because a lot of people watch this channel, um, are doing burr burr strategies. Uh, how can they get a hold of you or, or reach out to you on social media? Why don't we do that now? Best way is right on my personal page, Ryan Ayler. You can go to Ayler Lending Team, which is our business page. So anywhere there is the easiest way. I like social media, especially Facebook, because it's an easy way to track your conversations. So when you're using Facebook Messenger, let's say we message something, you know, you're not quite ready yet. It's a really easy for you to go back through and search those messages. And they don't disappear. When you do text messages, they disappear. Emails, if you delete them, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, most people don't delete their Facebook. And that's why I've built my business on Facebook. And hey, could that, could that end tomorrow? Sure. Um, but then you just readjust your strategy. But I like that. That's how we connect. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, why don't we talk about this now? What, if people go to your, your personal page, uh, Ryan Ayler, um, what are they going to see? I know video is a big thing for you, but you know, what, what are you doing to, to both entertain and educate? Exactly. And that's what it is, is it's people want to follow you because you're, you're entertaining them first. And then the education is just a small bonus. So you have to catch their attention with the fun stuff. And then hopefully some of them will soak in some of the education. So most of my posts are about my personal life. Um, so like my kids, I mountain bike. Um, I just do like fun, crazy videos usually, and just try to show that I'm a person and just, ha and just, and it's kind of forced me to get out of my bubble and live a life that's more fun and entertaining and exciting so that I can, you know, present that out, go around, do stuff in my community. But then I also make like highly produced videos that have some sort of content aware message in them. And by doing that, people go there, they enjoy it. They see we're a real person and we don't get very much hate you know, because we're not flashy, we're not showy. Uh, we just like to have fun and then put that out there. And I think you can, I know you can use that strategy for any business model. If, if you have, if you have your ideas and you know how you're going to structure it to get it out there to the target, you know, market that you want to see it. Very, very cool. So again, Facebook is your primary vehicle or are you on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat yeah. and all this other stuff? So uh, Facebook's my main driver. I just don't, get the engagement on um, Instagram. So in 2020, my wife's going to take over Instagram, put all of her effort into that because she likes it more. I'm going to stay with Facebook. Um, and then I'm toying with TikTok um, just as kind of like a fun little side project. But to me, that's like a very long-term play. You're not going to get instant gratification from that platform. Yeah, very cool. Well, let's talk about one more investor profile before I let you go. Me, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> uh, just because I get a lot of people that are kind of reaching out and talking about this. So let's, uh, let's just, assume, well, it's not assume it's me. So, 
um, let's say I own, uh, I don't know, let's call it 40 single family homes as rentals, right? All leased. I've owned them anywhere from 15 to six months, right? So but, uh, accrued them over time. Um, let's assume they all cash flow, you know, anywhere from a hundred to several hundred. Some are paid off. Uh, and, you know, what are my options in the lending market today? Obviously, given your 20% down program, I can go buy the next one, assuming my credit right. and bank statement and all that, which is fine. So that's And you cool. can have 10 continuous loans with that company at any time. That's where I was going. So 10 is still a number. Yeah. So let's, so let's flush them, that they out. Don't care. What does they that don't mean? care how many you currently own. You can only have 10 with them concurrently. Mm. So can we put a name on them just so we're clear? Do you have one you want to put a name on or no? Um, so that one is Angel Oak and okay. then there's Sprout. There's a few others that we're kind of vetting, but those are the two main ones that will All do right. programs like that. All right, let's and just call keep it in mind, Angel Oak. Okay. Yep. And keep in mind at the time of this video, and when you watch it, these things can change. They exactly. Change exactly. All the time. Yes. So don't come to me and make, Ryan, you told me it was 10. Well, the last time that I did it, it was 10. And yeah. they might say, oh, the risk profile was too great. Now it's five. Or, hey, you know what? We decided we're going to bump it to 15. So. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that because a lot of people, again, on these bird projects are like, I did. I talked to the end lender. But my bird project took five months longer than I thought it would. And now the rules changed and I'm stuck. Yeah, you should have been talking to your lender the whole time through because it's about the end lender and they are loaning you the money so they have the right to change their mind, <laughs> change the program, right? right? So, um, and, it's, and when it comes to like, if you work with me as a broker, you know, it's not like I'm choosing this for you. Like I yeah. want to close this loan because I get yeah. paid when it gets closed. So it's not like I'm trying to like sabotage you or your situation. It's like we have to just go based off of what the lenders require for risk factors. That's it. Yeah. So let's just call Angel Oak just because it's a name. And again, these rules apply as of 852 California time on December 17th, 2019. There, there's the caveat. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I have 40 loans with 40 different banks or I don't know, 20 different banks. Uh, so I could do 10 loans with Angel Oak as of today, 10 new loans, right? Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. What if I wanted to do a, a cash out refi of something? Are, what are the rules around a cash out refi, right? I'm sure there's a loan minimum. Um, probably affects rate. Uh, what, what, what is it? Are, does Angel Oak or any others do cash out refis versus just new loans? So that one is with, with them. I have not had any investors in the last year request a cash out refi on those type of programs. Okay. So the only ones I've done in the last year have just been a traditional, you know, 80% LTV, okay. um, conventional or FHA. Uh, so I wish I had more information on that, That's but okay. I'd rather just tell you yeah. what I've been doing than just make something up. Well, audience, just what I heard you say is uh, what I heard Ryan say is uh, some of you out there that are looking to cash out refis need to call him or reach out to him on Facebook and uh, let's see what happens. That's what I just heard him say. So I don't know what you heard him say, but that's what I heard him say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing is, is like these programs, like you already mentioned, change so much is we could talk three months ago and now, and it could all be different. So it never hurts to go and talk to a trusted resource and then we can go and do the searching and vetting for you yeah. and then present the options and you can decide what's best for you. Yeah. And then the last question I want to ask this, cause this is something, again, this is about me. I've been thinking about for a while is what if I wanted to do what called out in the industry, usually a portfolio loan. Let's say I wanted to put 20 houses in one loan, button them all up together. I want to keep them for the next 30 years. Um, that's my intention, right? So we don't have to peel them apart. Uh, have you seen or, you know, know anybody to call to see what that kind of looks like? So I have not ran across a lender in my book that does that as of now, okay. but I, there's a lot of talk in the future that they're working on yeah. loans like that. And also, um, fix and flip loans so yeah. that you can do short term loans with a traditional lender and not have to go hard money. Yeah. I think the person who fig figures out the flip to perm, if you will, right. Short to permanent loan. Uh, is going to make bank. Uh, right. Because I think 2020 is going to be a good year for real estate. I think the economy is going to stay strong. You know, we may have a hiccup at the end of the year with the election and all that nonsense. Uh, but I think, you know, as I've shared in my daily financial news, I think 2020 is going to be just fine. So, um, But I think you're, you're correct. It needs to be the same lender mm -hmm. that will lend you high risk money in the beginning and yep. then flip that into a low risk investment and then they get paid on both deals but yeah. internally so it would be cheaper 
then if you had to go to this guy and then go to this guy and then they both charge you full pop yep whereas this lender could charge you a little bit less for each transaction and mm -hmm. then everybody has an advantage yeah a blended rate or whatever yeah or points or right. whatever you want to call it yeah i think that's genius whoever figures that out first is going to be it's just going to be a home run so uh, anything else, Ryan, you think we should talk about in the lending or mortgage market? This has been a lot of fun. Uh, anything, uh, anything else you want to leave us with? I always just like to leave it with the best time to buy is when you can, because you don't know what's going to happen. There's no crystal ball. I mean, everybody uses that line, but it's just true. Like if you wait until you think it's the right time, there's no way to know when the right time is the right time. So like what's always worked good for me is if I want to buy and I can buy now and I have the means and I have the resources, then I do it. Yeah. And if you do your homework and you know what you're going to do with that property, whether it's a quick, you know, return or it's a hold, um, most likely you're going to do pretty good on it. If you go in willy nilly, like anything and don't do your homework, then, you, you know, there's a good chance you're going to lose out. But if you do your homework, you get with the right people and you make smart decisions, the majority of the time you're most likely going to win. So yeah. that's what I would say. I'm glad you brought that up because again, I've been doing this nearly 20 years and I remember a time when you could have an 800 credit score, six figure income, W2, a seven figure net worth, and the banks would not loan to you. I remember that time. I was laughed out of Wells Fargo and Bank of America and others um, because I was the devil, right? It was 2009 and real estate investors were a dirty word. So yeah, lending can change, buy when you can because I've seen the mortgage market just shut down. Uh, so uh, I think that's great advice, Ryan. Uh, one more time, how can people follow you or get a hold of you? Um, just Facebook. Um, you can go to Ryan Ayler right on there, E H L E R. You can go to AylerLendingTeam.com, um, and that's the easiest way to find me. All right, Ryan. Well, thank you very much for pulling over and doing this call. It was a lot of fun. And uh, again, folks, if you have any kind of interest in real estate investing, you need to get a hold of Ryan and his team. Uh, because these are the kind of folks that can help you, national brokers, lots of people in his book. Uh, so give him a call, reach out on Facebook, and of course, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Ryan.